We've put space on the American agenda tonight to chart our changing attitudes. Here's Ned Potter. When the moon rises over Santa Rosa, California, it usually seems very far from 13-year-old Robin Day. For one brief shining moment before she was born, it seemed much closer. But why some say the moon? Why choose this as our goal? 20 seconds and counting. And they may well ask, why climb the highest mountain? 11, 10, 9, ignition sequence start. We choose to go to the moon in this decade and do the other things, not because they are easy, but because they are hard. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. John F. Kennedy chose the moon because it would challenge us, because it would beat the Russians. He asked the impossible and got it. It was probably one of the most exciting uh, events of my lifetime. That's one small step for man. I remember it sending goosebumps up my arms. One giant leap for man. But was it really a giant leap? Today at the White House, Neil Armstrong said Apollo was just the end of a beginning. There are great ideas undiscovered. Breakthroughs available to those who can remove one of truth's protective layers. There are places to go beyond belief. Remember, though, that America was a very different place when we went. We were locked in high combat with the forces of communism. We were willing to go on a $25 billion mission to beat the Soviets. Dear men from the planet Earth, for except foot upon the moon, July 1969, but then the astronauts came back to a country preoccupied with Vietnam, civil rights, and inflation. By 1971, President Nixon had canceled three moon flights and killed a plan to go to Mars. Out of 34 launch pads at Cape Canaveral, only seven are still active. Today, facing a 30% budget cut in the next five years, NASA fights for a space station whose purpose is no longer clear. We got to the top of the mountain, we looked around, uh, probably considered where we were and decided uh, the future can wait. And, and I happen to think that's, that's wrong. I don't think it can wait. In fact, go to the movies or a computer store or a museum, and you'll find people still enchanted with the idea of space. Polls show they're still interested, even though they don't think we can afford anything remotely approaching the moon landings anytime again soon. I do believe that there is a, a, a deficiency in the American spiritual diet which uh, space exploration can help us remedy. Daniel Borston, historian and former librarian of Congress, says Americans are so worried about keeping up in the world that they even expect explorers to be cost effective. That's why the space shuttle was built, to be reusable, all purpose, and above all, cheap. It isn't, and it's certainly not what leads to great discoveries. The great discoveries are, of course, those that reach not for the fulfillment of expectation, but for the, for the surprises. I want my children to know about bold and noble things. I want them to take risks. I want them to see a country that stands for something more than just consumption. Beautiful view. Is that something? Which is why we end up where we began, at moonrise in Santa Rosa, California, where Robin Day feels sure we'll be back on the moon. We're curious. We want to explore more and find out more about it. For now, though, many Americans say the moon remains distant because we took a giant leap and stepped back. This is Ned Potter for the American Agenda.